Hey, this is Matthew Butler and welcome to the tutorial. This is basically an overview right now of what exactly the the beginning states you need to know about getting into Expresso and to creating your user data configuration stuff. So uh, before it gets too technical, you should watch this first. That is why this is labeled the first video. Anyways, so uh, if you just open up Cinema 4D and uh, you make like a box or something doesn't matter what it is and then um, you can put that inside of a null object which is alt or option G once you have that you can right click on that null object and go to Expresso and then you'll have an Expresso null editor thing here once you have that open, this is where people usually start to freak out. You got all these menus in here and you have no idea what to do because it's a bit scary. Basically, nude node, go in there, Expresso. These three bottom ones you don't even have to worry about. It's just, I mean, this tutorial here is going to just deal with the basic stuff you need to get off the ground running and it's usually 95 percent of the stuff that I use for whatever I'm doing so you'll probably never have to go into any of these unless you get really advanced into it once you get into here we're only going to be going into the general and into calculate and into logic so you got a lot of menus in here but it's not as scary as it actually looks so just start off we can go in here and make a remark. Remark basically is just for writing a little um, comments basically. I like to say um, uh, for each little section I make I want to put a title on it. So this is what I do. I, I write like um, start of the tutorial. Boom. So then it says it right below there and then I would put a bunch of nulls in there and then move on to the next one. So that's basically Expresso, the gist of it, right before we get started. Coming over to the user data side, let's rename this null object to controls, and then let's go into user data, let's see, click on here, user data, and then add user data this menu pops up and basically you have a whole list again of kind of the exact same thing a whole list of stuff that is very frightening once you see it right away but it's not as bad as it looks and you have like an example file here it'll show you exactly what um what the outcome will be so this user data there will be a user data icon right here that pops up in the in the corner so you have your basic coordinates object and then it'll have whatever you name it. If you don't name it, it'll just be user data. I like to name it so it looks pretty personal and like uh, professional and whatnot. So if you just click add group and drag that group out of the user data and then you rename that to whatever you want your controls to be like extra options or um, like hidden controls or something crazy whatever you want you can have it default open um, title bar at the top here like object properties if you want that there scale to height which um, basically it doesn't really do much for you unless you make a giant with a bunch of different properties inside and then columns it'll be you can have it split up into two or three columns like this one right here is just one column if it was two columns it would have radius on this side and then um, aspect ratio would be up here and then orientation would be on the other side so uh, depending on what you're doing you might want to configure it that way then you can just drag that data that automatically got created you can drag that into the extra options and then once you come into here you can name your property so let's try uh, first user data and that automatically becomes a short name for it and um, you know all these little uh, keyframe black dots that are usually um, on most properties in Cinema 4D 
you can choose to have it there or not. So if you have a specific property that probably shouldn't be animated, you can easily just uncheck that. And then we get into this giant list here. So uh, start off, let's go to bool, boolean. And that's basically like this uh, example here at the bottom shows. It's basically just a checkbox. So if you need a checkbox for something, that's what a boolean's for. And um, you can below that, you can set the default value. So if someone um, right clicks on it on the uh, property and then you want to go to reset, it'll reset to this default value. And also, once I push OK, it'll go to whatever this default value is. So if I have it checked right now, click OK, extra option pops up, and it's automatically checked. If I uncheck it right there, right click, reset to default, it goes to checked. So that is that. Let's go back in to the uh, extra options. You can go click on user data, and now just click manage user data because we already have that in there. Now, uh, a tricky thing is that once you make that first property and then you click OK, um, basically all the, the data type is automatically set up, so you can't go back and change it later on. So if it's a Boolean, then it's a Boolean. The only way to get around it is to click Add Data and retype everything and then just right-click and remove and delete that one. It's the only way to get around it. So let's make another one. Let's name it uh, Second User Data. Pops right up. Let's make this not animatable. And then we can go down to Color. We're not going to be using Color for this, but just to show you, it's basically just a color thing right here. So if you have like a text or something, it'll go to that color. Or if you have like a color down here in the materials, you can change it to that color. That's basically what it's for date and time if you want like a date and time stamp somewhere on your computer on your uh, C4D project that's where it uh, comes in or if you have like a running total of numbers or something or counting down or something that's what that's for not very uh, often used file name if you're referencing like a texture or like a HDR sky or something like that that's what this would be used for but we're sticking away from that in this tutorial because it's um, not really that technical and uh, it's pre pretty straightforward. Um, float. float is the main one. Once you get into float, you can have a uh, float, float slider, float slider, no edited field, and latitude and longitude. The first one is just basically this value right here, percent and um, it just floats and uh, float up or down and usually it's animatable just because whatever you're controlling is usually something you want to change a value to but sometimes maybe not going down right now it's percent obviously if it was a real it's a real number like a whole number um, but it doesn't have to be a whole number uh, degree is obviously degree 0 to 360 right there it shows and then meter obviously shows distance right there so just for this let's go with real so um, this next part is step and that's just the value it will increase every time you move up so right now it's just going up one so let's just change this to five oops hop back in change that to five and once you move on this you'll notice it goes up in increments of five and down in increments of five instead. So if you want to get like real technical and like 0.05, it'll go up really small like that. Okay, and then we have the limit minimum and limit maximum. So if you want to have a limit for your numbers, say um, you only want the size of a font to only go to uh, 30 pixels or something then uh, the max would be 30 and the minimum let's say would just be 1 because you don't want it to become so small it's 0 okay and then uh, this slider minimum and slider maximum 
that's basically for if you're going to say um, the uh, slider is in here. Let's put a slider in there first. Um, okay, so there's a slider here now because I went to float slider. Now, if you want it to be like something normally would go to, let's say um, a font size of 12 and then a font size of 24. So if you crank this up, you'll notice it only goes down to 12 and it goes up to 24. But obviously if you just increase this more, you can go to that 30. And if you go down, you can hit that one, that minimum maximum that we first set up. So that's basically a float for the float slider. Um, float slider not editable, that's basically just a slider without the value on the left side. So um, it's not really that uh, common or having a purpose to that unless it's just like a uh, like a shade of a color or something. You want to just like put an average in that doesn't really matter. But usually you want to have the user to be able to put in like a specific value. That is why float slider no editable field is usually not the way to go. And then finally latitude longitude. Obviously it's just degree markings and um, I basically have never used it because there, I have no purpose in ever using this, but maybe one of you will. Let's add another one. Moving on, let's go with font right there, pretty easy. Just like the basic font layout, you can choose like your font and whatnot. Um, gradient. Of course, you have these little uh, sliders here, you know, you can input for your default value in case you're having a, a material that the user would uh, over here change instead of clicking on it and going through a bunch of, of uh, controls to try to figure out what to change. So let's say default value right here, red to black. Let's make it not animatable. So if you have a material here, obviously it would be uh, red to black if you set it up in the Expresso that way. Moving on, uh, not going to touch on that. Integer integer is pretty uh, important. Um, like uh, drop down menus. Um, that's basically what an integer cycle is. So let's say um, there's these syntax here that tell you what to do. And basically you start at, at zero, zero, and then the this little symbol here, and that'll be whatever you type next is what it'll say. So let's say um, position one, and then the next one would be one, and then position two, and then two, position three. And then let's say uh, you want to have a line in there. That's where the separator comes in. So you can just do minus one, and then there'd be a line right there. And we can go with three, and that's basically what that'll look like. So you notice right there, it comes up one, two, three, and there's a line. So that's how that's going to work, and we're going to be dealing with that later on. And then uh, integer, obviously, it's kind of like the, um, the float, except... Um, it's it's basically the same thing except the little uh, float slider here. You have no option to do that. Um, same exact thing as the step and everything. Then in, integer slider. That's basically exact same thing again. Just um, instead of a float, it's an integer. And then um, radio buttons. That's kind of the same thing as uh, the cycle option. It's uh, the little dot options, you know, that you have. You choose, like, option A, B, or C. Zero, again, would be, like, some value, then one, then two, and then you just keep on going and going. And obviously, below here, these are the dots I'm talking about. And also, all of these have a details option. Going into details, you can have it either have it open or closed right away. Um, and then also you can have columns. 
So that usually, if you're making like a giant list of like 10 different options here, it's good to have columns instead. So right here, we got three columns here, one, two, three, and it'll keep going down the line, and it would just keep going and going in three columns, which is uh, obviously pretty helpful uh, to not like take up the whole screen here. And um, buttons, usually don't use that. These little uh, circles are fine. That's basically all with the integer. Come back to that later in the following videos. Lens glow, link, matrix, path list. All those, not really going to touch on any of them. Priority, not going to touch on either. No need to explain anything there. Spline, this is obviously just a spline. So we will need to create one of these later. All these details here, we don't even have to worry about, so it looks a little frightening, but all you need to see is the uh, default value. It's just like bottom, top, bloom. It's a spline. Pretty basic. Static text, again, just a blank static text. Like um, if you want text to be in here, like with the instructions on it. Instructions. ABC. And then it would default to uh, the static text being instructions. Um, or, yeah. Then string, obviously, we're going to be using that. Uh, if you want your string to be a specific um, text, like we're going to have a uh, piece of text that we want type to go into. We just type it in here and then it would go into the mo text object that we'll be using later. So it's basically um, just to input text. So that will be useful later and usually you don't want it animatable because it's not very pretty once it animates because you can't really animate letters together. And that is that. Texture, obviously it goes to texture, kind of like the um, file name. Time is basically the time value of this whole timeline here. If you want something to happen at a specific time, that is when that would be used. Um, vector and separator, not really going to be using any of that either. So that's your basic rundown of the user data and it's basically, uh, you'll be able to create and control your whole project with just this one object here. So you can have a giant hierarchy of like all these null objects and it'll get all confusing and not sure where to go. This controls everything in the project. It's very simple once you come back to the project. If you're giving it to another person to work on, it'll be very helpful if you have these controls in it.